Hi, I'm going to teach you how to use the Blender to Super Monkey Ball Blender plugin that allows you to export a stage from Blender into Super Monkey Ball. As a preliminary thing, you're going to need a few different tools. And if you don't have these tools, then you need to pause the video and go get them. These tools are GameCube Rebuilder, Workshop 2, front end and Super Monkey Ball 2 converter because this has a few tools you're gonna need in order to compress your LZ which is your stage file so that it'll run in the game and the last tool you'll need is GX model viewer the version with or without the user interface is fine anyways the first thing that we need to do is go to GitHub. We need to get the plugin. Because if you don't have the plugin, then you can't make stages. So we're going to copy all of this shit. Next thing you need to do is open up a text panel in Blender. Create new, paste, run script. Now you're going to have a new portion on your tool shelf on, on, the, on the left. You can open and close this tool shelf with T with your mouse over the 3D viewport. You're going to see a lot of crap in this tool shelf, and this is all that you need to get your stage from Blender to a config that Workshop 2 will be able to read. So let's go ahead and set this back to my UV map editor because we need to texture shit. So when you're creating a stage for Super Monkey Ball with this plugin, everything needs to either be an item group or be parented to an item group. You can create an item group with either of these two top buttons. You want to create a normal item group for any portion of your stage that doesn't move. If it does move, you want to create an animated item group. If you make an animated item group for something that doesn't move, it's not going to cause a problem, but it will make your LZ bigger and it will take longer to export. So don't use it if you don't have anything that's animated. You can also convert existing objects to item groups if you don't want to have everything parented to empties. For instance, it's a lot more sensible and easier to visualize this being an item group and then spawning an object and parenting it to that thing. It's up to you. And this is for background objects. If you want something to be a part of the background, which means that it won't have collision and it won't tilt when you move, then you should mark it as a background object. Like that. So now this is an item group. This is a background object. Let's go ahead and give it a material so that we know that it's there whenever we get in game. Now you might want to make some animated stuff. So let's do that really quickly. We're going to bring up the graph editor instead of the UV image editor. And we're going to make some animations. So let's say we've got our platform here. And we've got a second platform beyond there. And we want this platform to move back and forth. This is easy. This is incredibly easy. All we have to do is set an initial starting position. Figure out how long we want this animation to last before it loops which since the game is 60 frames per second is going to be however many seconds you want multiplied by 60. So let's say we want this animation to last four seconds as it goes back and forth. We're going to set our start frame to one and our end frame to 240 because 60 times four is 40. We're going to set a keyframe on frame zero and we're going to set a second keyframe on our final frame, which is 240 in this instance, and they're both going to be the same. 
Now for this instance, I probably want it to move back and forth equally on both sides at the same speed. So I'm going to do just that. And I probably should have mentioned that you can create a keyframe with I. It'll bring up this menu. You can choose location, rotation, or a combination of both. Anyways, that's animated now. But wait, we're forgetting something. We have to make it an animated item group or else it won't move or exist. So now we're going to move this so that it's connected and at the same height. Well, this looks mighty fantastic, if I do say so myself. This stage could probably go into a, a never giving us up ROM hack and it wouldn't be out of place. However, we haven't specified a few other things that we're going to need. Namely, a goalpost and a spawning zone where the ball spawns. Every single object you see here, except for the start, is going to follow the same basic rules. It's going to be spawned as an empty, which is this thing. It's not going to be anything you recognize. It's not going to be the game object. It's going to be an empty. Now, what you do with that empty is you position it to where you want that object to be. And if you lose track of what's what, you can see the object name down here. Goal B. What could that stand for? It's the blue goal. So I'm going to put it here. For the goal specifically, the goal will be facing the opposite direction of the y-axis and pointing upward on the z. So for this stage, this empty is oriented exactly correctly with the y facing away from the goal, sorry, from the spawn, and the z facing upward. Now it's not enough for us just to place it, we have to parent it to an item group. You remember I said earlier Everything needs to either be an item group or parented to an item group. So select first the goal, then the object, and hit Control P, object. Incredibly easy. Now let's say you want a banana. If you want a banana, we're going to do the same thing. The direction it's pointing does not matter, but it does need to be. 0.5 units above whatever you're putting it on. Make sure you're on frame 0 when you're doing all of this. If you're not on frame 0, shit is not going to be positioned correctly. Parent it to the moving platform because we want this banana to be on the moving platform and moving. And look at that. This is our first stage. There are a few more things that we have to do at this point, but for the most part, it's done. Let's set a fallout plane. There are a few more options on the left side of the screen that you might not know what they mean. The time step is how often it samples the animated objects for, for their position and location. I just said the same. For their position and rotation. If you have objects that are moving slowly and gradually, you can afford to push this up in order to save file size. Because the more animation keyframes you have, the bigger your LZ is going to be. And if it's too big, your game will crash! So because this thing is moving pretty gradually, I can set the time step up to 5. If I had a bunch of things moving rapidly and in synchronization with each other, I might not want to move it off 1. The time and pos rot decimal places don't need to be changed. They're fine. Let's set our fallout Y. This is a bit non-obvious because it says Y, but this is how far down your ball will need to be before it counts as fallen out when you play the stage. 
So let's find out what the lowest point is on our stage. It's going to be the Z location, since Blender works off of an XYZ coordinate system, whereas Monkey Ball uses XZY. So as we can see, the lowest point on our stage is negative 2. As a rule of thumb, I don't generally set this any higher than 3 units below the lowest point. So in this case, that would be negative 5. But it doesn't matter as long as it's at least one unit below the lowest point, which in this case would be negative 3. Next, you need to specify a config and OBJ directory. These are your stage configuration and stage model, respectively. I generally just set these to the same thing as the file name of your blend. So let's go ahead and save this somewhere. After all, it would suck if we crashed. Tutorial.blend We're going to set this to slash slash in order to specify that this is going to be the relative directory, aka the same directory that we just saved the blend in. But you can set this to an absolute directory anywhere on your computer if you so please. Tutorial.xml and tutorial.obj. Make sure you're on frame zero. If you're not actively animating an object, you should always be working on frame zero. Generate config. Generate obj. We're done with Blender. We can close it. Who's messaging me? Okay. So now, we need to do some stuff with the tools that I told you to have at the beginning of the video. If you don't have those tools, you need to get them. So we have our tutorial.xml and our tutorial.obj. First thing we need to do is run Super Monkey Ball fucking workshop to LZ front end. This is a command line tool. You can't just double click it. You need to use your command line. That text is way too small. Okay. So we opened a command line in the directory of workshop to LZ front end. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. It gives us some information on how to use the tool. Isn't that convenient? So we know our directory of our XML, which is the file that it wants. So we're going to use this. We're going to say dash C for the config. We're going to write in the directory of our config. Now we need to output a file. Compressed output does not work yet. And it also doesn't support Super Monkey Ball 1. So we're going to say dash O, give it the same directory, output.lz.raw. It just made our raw LZ file. <laughs> now, we need to open up GX Model Viewer. If you're doing it with the user interface version, this will be incredibly easy because it has buttons to show you how to do this. But if you have the no user interface version, it's even easier! Because all you have to do is drag the OBJ onto it. And it makes the .gma and the .tpl. So now we have these two files, the TPL and the GMA. 
Those are necessary because they contain the textures and the model information. However, we still need this LZ because it contains the collision for the stage, as well as the game objects. This is what the other tools are for that I told you to get. They can be found in Super Monkey Ball 2 Converter. These tools are LZ, SC, DEC, and LZ Fix. We need to specify one file. That is our output.lz.raw. And we need to compress it. We'll create an LZS file, which you then drag onto LZ Fix. And it creates an LZ. Congratulations, you're done. You made all the files you need to put your stage in the game. Now, depending on what stage you want to replace, you're going to want a few different file names. I've got some batch files that I made that automatically rename things to the correct file names so that they'll be in the game. However, none of that matters because we're just testing. So we're going to stage, we're going to, we're going to name this ST001 for both the TPL and the GMA. LZ needs to be named STAGE001 in all caps. These have to be your file names. Except you can swap out the 001 with any ID you want between 0 and 420! You can check which file IDs, which stage IDs are which in the debug mode level select. There are also resources online that will tell you which stages are which IDs. Anyways, I've already done it, but if you want to build your own ISO, you have to get GameCube Rebuilder, which is this tool. And with it, you need to open an image, which is your Super Monkey Ball 2 ISO, and you need to extract the root anywhere on your computer, and I put it here. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to replace Stage 1 by copying those files in and replacing what was already there. I'm going to open my root, like so. I'm going to save it to where I want this new ISO to build. And I'm going to hit rebuild. And I have to wait for that to go. Now how you play test your game is completely up to you. I like to use Dolphin because it's easy and it takes no time at all. Oh my god, look at it. It's right there. It's in the game. Let's load it up and play it. Ready? Go! Look at that. That's our background object. It has no collision. Ready? Oh my god, we have a moving stage object with a banana on it. And a goal. If you still can't make a stage with the Blender plugin after you watch this tutorial, watch it again. You missed something. After you watch it again, if you still don't get it, uninstall.